Welcome back to Mistake Man. This video is the final part in my build series of the Bandai Zentradi Battle Pod from Macross or Robotech. In the previous video, I finished most of the painting and weathering. In this video, I will finish assembling the model and add the decals and create the display base. I'm excited to show you what I came up with for the display base. I'm pleased with how it came out and uh, I hope you like it. So here we go. Okay, so it's time to talk about the base. I've got an idea in mind of what I want to do. And I think it's just gonna be kind of a simple flat base. It's gonna be a little bit of a scene with the, like on kind of a city street with maybe a sidewalk and some rubble of some like crumbled pieces of building. I've got some foam, just some, just kind of insulating foam scraps from another project that I should be able to just kind of create some crumbly looking pieces out of. And again, the idea isn't really to do like a whole diorama that's like a destroyed city or anything, but just to kind of have a few little elements to show it as a, you know, an alien pod that's attacking a city. And also importantly to help give a sense of the scale of this pod. Because right now it's just a, you know, it looks like a cute little, a cute little chicken, little bird robot that runs around and causes mischief. But this, these things are actually giant and terrifying. And so to give a sense of scale, um, I wanted to get like a little car or something, a little vehicle I could put next to it. So you could see, okay, this thing really is gigantic. So I went to my local hobby store and... They have a lot of like scale stuff for, you know, model railroads and that sort of thing. And the box for this model says that this is a 172 scale and that it's 15 and some meters high, which I don't know, might be about right. I, I kind of looked at the scale of this and the scale of, I have another Macross model of a one of the Veritech fighters. I've got this this guy here in the Battaloid form or Batroid form. And it I think it also says it's a 172. Yeah, so right there. It says it's 172 scale. And I'm skeptical of that because if we, oh, I haven't obviously assembled this yet, but if we look at the size of this, I mean, that's, I think, the lower portion of one of the legs, which is about the same size as the lower portion of this leg here, which means this is about the same height, if not even taller than this, which I don't think is right. Because in the show, I mean, the show is a little inconsistent on, like, how much it shows the scale of certain things, but... In the show, the these Veritech fighters, when they're in this uh, in this battleoid form, they're supposed to be about the same height as a Zentradi, you know, like a in the flesh Zentradi, not in a pod. And so, you know, they even get into like fist fights and stuff between, you know, these giant suits or, you know, airplanes that turn into to robots. So if this is the same size as Zentradi, it cannot be the same size as the Zentradi battle pod because the Zentradi has to fit inside that pod right there. And that just doesn't make sense, right? You're not going to fit this giant guy who's the same height as this crunched up inside that little pod. So these have to be bigger. And in fact... In one of the shots, they're actually fighting out in space, and uh, they've disabled one of these pods, and they're investigating or recovering it. You can see there's there's two of these uh, Veritech fighters that are going up to the pod, and you can see they are smaller than the pod, and they're at about the right scale you'd expect for one of those to be able to curl up and fit inside, sit inside one of these pods. So I think that's that scale makes more sense to me. And so that's more what I'm going for. And so I think it ends up being uh, a little bit taller or this model ends up being 
a little bit smaller in scale than 172. So with that in mind, uh, I started looking up like like little cars that I could use. And my first thought was to like look at a Matchbox or a Hot Wheels car. But I think those are like 164 or thereabouts. So that's too big um, relative to this. And uh, so I ended up looking at more um, the HO scale for uh, model railroading. And now I'm going off memory here, but I'm thinking that's more like 184, 186 or something like that, which I think puts it in a pretty good range for what I want to do with this. So I got these little, they had a little set of uh, cars at that scale. And that's perfect. This is exactly what I was looking for. So they had this one. There was it was a set of four. This one is also was also in there, kind of a little minivan. I could maybe either just leave this as is as a minivan, or I could maybe paint it as some kind of like a utility service van or something. Um, but it's it's mostly there. It's I wouldn't have to do much to it in order to. It's even got like a little little license plate on the back. kind of gives you a, a sense of how how big this guy is supposed to be when there's a little car next to it. So I don't know, I might have the car tipped over on its side or kind of maybe have it a little bit damaged. I haven't decided yet what I'll do there, but so I'll have the car there to give a sense of scale and also for, you know, like I said, make some rubble out of this foam. I've also found this kind of in the, uh, at, at the hobby store in kind of their discount bin of just some railroad pieces, but I like that it has these, it's like pieces of a bridge, but kind of these structural uh, trusses. Let me pull it out of there so you can see it. Yeah, anyway, so it's got some, you know, like little, little bolt plates holding together. So I figure I can make this as some kind of like a scrap of a, a crumbled building and I don't know this could be like a little utility box that's sometimes you see next to on a sidewalk next to a stoplight or, or something like that so I've got used some pieces of that and the car and then while I was looking through reference images uh, for this model I found a few images of a vending machine. It's like a little robot vending machine that follows uh, Min Mei and her little sort of little brother or little cousin uh, around, and you know tries to get him to buy some some soda. It's a little petite cola machine, and I thought that would actually be kind of cool to you know a nice little touch to have that. Now, obviously, I don't have a model of that, but I've got a 3D printer, and it's a really simple design. I could really easily model that up. So I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to make a little petite cola machine and just have it, you know, next to the sidewalk or maybe even tipped over or something because, you know, it's been damaged in battle, you know, something like that. I'm going to see if I can pull that off. So I'm going to go, it's, it's going to end up being kind of small because, right, it's, it's a vending machine that I guess would probably be about the same height as this little car. So it's going to be tiny. So we'll have to see how that turns out, but... Yeah, I'm going to go uh, model that up and get it printed and see what we got. I've switched over to my computer and I'm going to look at designing a 3D model of the vending machine that I want on my display base. I've got a few reference pictures here that I'm working off of and they're pretty decent. You can see most of the machine here in this one and then you can see the entire machine here. And then here's a close-up of the logo. I'm thinking of creating my own custom decal for the this logo here, the Petite Cola logo and the banner across the top. This little double arch display, whatever that's supposed to be, is just kind of this stylistic thing here. And then also for the control panel there as well. Okay, so I've created a 3D model of the vending machine, and 
you can see it here. There's nothing on the back there. And if we compare that to the reference image here, you can see pretty much got what I'm going for. So I made this portion here where I'm gonna try and do a custom decal for that Petite Cola logo. Um, so I, I made a raised face that I can put that decal on and I had it wrap around the side just like you see here. And then I did a raised face here. I didn't try to do any of the, you know, separate little panels inside of there. I'm just gonna have the decal take care of that. Um, so it's just, but I did want that recessed face. And then I did a raised face here for the little panel. And I didn't bother putting in the feet, the little wheels, like what you see down here. They're just little spheres. I don't think that those would actually print very well. Um, down here at the bottom, and then that steep slope there, um, I, I don't think it would come out looking all that great. I think it would be distorted. So I think what I'm going to do is try and find some beads that are about the right size to uh, just glue on there. So I, that's why I did cut out little, I had to make little cutouts for it that I can, that will help me locate and glue in the, the beads. I made this as an assembly so that I could print it in two pieces. So my thought was to break it into two pieces there that you can see. So if I drag those apart. And I've also created this little recess feature, kind of a D-shaped recess and a D-shaped pin that fits in that just to help me locate those once they're printed. Yeah, so there we go. Um, I have no idea how well this is going to print. Uh, <laughs> this thing is really tiny. It's 16 and a quarter millimeters tall. Uh, it's 17 total if you go all the way to the bottom of where the little uh, wheel spheres will be. That was my target was to do 17 millimeters high. So <laughs> it's it's tiny, you know, six and a half millimeters deep. That little post right there, 1.75 millimeters in diameter. So I don't know how well my 3D printer is going to handle printing something that small. If the resolution is going to be adequate to even see any of these features. But I think it's ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and 3D print that and uh, we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so I have printed out my first attempt at that model and uh, didn't uh, go perfectly. It's got the little kind of raised edge around the top where the logo for Petit Cola goes, that band around the top, and then also the little recessed section here, and then the little raised portion here with all the controls on the vending machine. Uh, it actually shows up, so I think this is workable. The little part down here where the where the can would be dispensed is a little a little warped, which I mean this is tiny detail. I didn't really expect that to print well, but you know it's actually it's doable, it's usable. A little recessed hole is not great. Um, that didn't work out too well, but you know overall not bad. The only major thing is you can see on the side we got this huge bulge in the plastic. So, I mean, this is a thing that happens when you have just like a, a solid chunk of plastic, even something this tiny, um, there's enough solid plastic there and it prints so quickly that those layers don't have time to cool down and set before we've, you know, stacked a whole bunch of them together and all that, you know, all their, all their heat just combined together just keeps the stuff liquid. And so it keeps it fluid. So it just, it melts and kind of bulges out the side. And obviously one way to combat that is to, instead of filling all that with solid plastic would be to use an infill pattern that's, you know, mostly empty space, but then has just some like cross hatching or honeycombing or something to uh, provide the structure that you need to keep it um, assembled. And my printer has uh, settings to automatically add in infill like that, but I think this must be small enough that it, it didn't, 
exceed the threshold where it starts doing that. And so it just kept that whole thing solid on the inside. And I didn't notice that at the time I was uh, slicing the model. Otherwise I could have gone in and, you know, forced it to add the infill in that section, which if I need to, if I do need to reprint this, I'll go ahead and do that. But, you know, as is, other than that um, melted portion there and the little little bottom section that didn't, or the little, little hole, alignment pin hole that I put there didn't really work out well. But, you know, other than those two things, this is pretty usable. Um, I, I'm honestly, I'm surprised and pleased at how well it did for such a tiny thing. So I think I'm going to go ahead and try to use this. I can just sand that off, hopefully. At least that's going to be my attempt, or, or even cut it off with a knife or something. But I can fix that. And, you know, if it's not perfect, that's fine, because this is supposed to be, you know, potentially damaged in a battle. So um, if it's kind of banged up looking, that's even better. So there's the top half. I printed the bottom portion as a separate piece, the, the stand. And uh, I got some mixed results with that. Again, the brim is still on there. I haven't cleaned that off. And the actual rectangular portion of the base looks great. Like it's, it printed that very precisely. It even has like little, this is gonna be hard to show, but little divots cut out for where the little spherical feet are gonna go. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of impressed that it actually did that. So it did a really good job of, of doing nice crisp lines for that rectangular base. But for the, the cylindrical pedestal, um, that's a yikes. It's, I don't know why it's so swirly. You see that? Like it's not straight at all. There's weird... <laughs> Sorry about the exposure on that, but you can kind of see it there. It's not good. I don't know why it did such a terrible job of printing that. It might have maybe just gone too fast. Because, I mean, when it's when it's printing those layers, it goes really quick. It's just whoop, 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 whoop. You know, and it just bumps up to the next layer. Just, you know, it takes less than, you know, just a few millis... Or, I mean, it's just, it's fast. It prints those layers so fast that maybe again, it just didn't have enough time for the next layer down to cool because it's just stacking on layer after layer of melted plastic and there's just not enough time for that to cool. And so it just kind of, uh, you know, melts and droops and ends up looking really nasty. And then if the, the next, the, the previous layer that it just laid down isn't in the spot where the printer expects it to be, it doesn't know that, you know, it doesn't know that it's, sagged and drooped down it's going to try and put plastic where it thinks the where you know where it put the layer doesn't know it's moved so if it it's just going to instead of extruding out and kind of flattening out to create a nice even thickness layer it's just going to kind of ooze out and uh yeah leave with just bad results so uh i could maybe try printing that again i don't know if it's really worth fiddling around just for something that tiny uh, I'll probably just cut that off and just use a piece of sprue or some cylindrical shaped thing. I think I can use what I've got here. It didn't turn out great and definitely some lessons learned. So I'll, um, I'll get this cleaned up. I'll get it painted, just the base color of red, just kind of the major colors of it. And then for the actual Petit Colo logo and for the controls, I think I'll just uh, do some custom decals for those. That's again something I've never done before, and but I've I've been interested in learning how to do it. Now I've got a project where I can uh, I can do something like that, so I'll have to give that a try. Obviously, these are going to be very tiny, so I might have to again consider if that's going to play a factor in the design or the the production of those custom decals. I'll have to definitely think about that, but I think that's a perfect application for. A custom decal so I'll see what I can I can do there I've got I don't have any of the custom decal paper um, but I've got some on order and it should be here soon the next day or two so I should be able to uh, give that a try okay so I've completed assembly 
and I've also glued a lot of the joints in place because what because once I got the legs glued on here and yeah, when I was trying to work with everything the the legs were just flopping all over the place and it was difficult to work with so I decided to go ahead and decide on a pose and let's see if I can adjust the camera so you can see that a little bit better how's that okay that's better so my idea is to do something like this where it's looking slightly downward and also has one foot up on uh, just some rubble that I'm going to put on the display base. As you can see, I finished doing the weathering on the top portion of the pod. And, you know, I don't think I went too crazy with it, but there's definitely some there. Now, the last bit of detailing that I'm going to do for this is going to do some panel lining, darken some of the panel lines. And, uh, I wanted to put the gloss coat on first because it seems to seems easier to work with on a gloss coat than on a flat. So I haven't done the panel line darkening just yet, but I have got the gloss coat on because my next step is going to be the decals, then darken the panel lines, and and then just do like a matte coat to finish it up and it'll be done. For the display base, I've made a little bit of progress on what I'm doing, what I'm going to do there. I've got the little little minivan that I've been, that I want to use, and I've just done a little bit of uh, weathering, just kind of scuffing up some of the paint. But then also, I did kind of a shatter effect on the windshield there, which I actually, I think that turned out pretty good. I, I like the, the result. Like it's been hit with some debris and just shattered. And then, of course, this top window here is just completely broken out. I think that turned out pretty good. I put a dent in the top there. That's okay. I don't know how realistic it looks, but... And I've assembled a little vending machine that I 3D printed. Let's see if this, this thing is tiny. Let's see if the camera will focus on it. There we go. I cleaned it up. Took off some of the, the striations you could see from the 3D printing process. Uh, cleaned up that bulge that was on the side where it had melted through. And put a coat of paint on there. Oh, and also for the little little feet, there's little wheels down at the bottom. Oh, I also added a little, like a little vent grill in the back. That wasn't part of the 3D model. I thought of that after I'd already printed it. I considered... Going back to the 3D model, adding that detail, and then fixing some of the issues that I had with the print, and just printing it again because it's so tiny. I mean, it would take it literally takes just a few minutes to print, and it really doesn't take much material, so it would not be a big deal to reprint it. But you know, I decided to go ahead and just go with the one I had, and fix the issues that I had with it, and then add that little detail there, just a piece of sheet styrene that I kind of gouged some lines in and then darken those and for the feet or the the wheels i guess i ended up looking for some tiny little spherical beads that would do the trick and i did end up finding something that would i thought might work so these little these are two millimeter diameter and they're just tiny little spheres they do have a hole through them. So, yeah, these that's what I ended up using. And uh turned out just fine. I just super glued those on there. I did fill the holes in. I didn't want to have the holes from the beads as part of the finished model here. So I just used some uh, ultraviolet curing resin that I've used on other projects. Just put a tiny drop that filled in the hole and then zapped that with the UV. And it... Uh, Turned out just fine. If you look really close, you can see where the holes used to be, but pretty, pretty tiny de detail. So I thought that was good enough. I think I'm going to go ahead and work on the decals for the battle pod. Okay, here's our decals. 
lots of just little little logos and alien writing. A couple of red stripes across the legs. And yeah, there's quite a few decals that go on this model. Okay, the decals are done. And uh, they turned out fine. Uh, I'm going to go back in before I do the, the final matte coat. I do want to go in and do a little bit of weathering on the decals. Maybe chip some of them just so they're not so brand new and clean looking, especially on these feet. But there's a lot of chipped, damaged looking stuff on the paint. I want the, the decals to kind of blend in with that as well. So I'll do that mostly on the legs and only just a little bit on the head. But there were quite a few decals on this model. So yeah, there's, there's the decals. And I've started working on darkening the panel lines. Uh, I've essentially done the legs at this point. And I like the way it looks. Definitely brings out those panels. Uh, I haven't quite finished. I still need to do a little bit on this knee here. And then I haven't done any on the upper portion yet. So I'll do that as well. But yeah, that's how it's looking so far. I'm really, really liking the way it looks. I've switched back to my computer and I'm working on designing the decals, the custom decals for the little vending machine. And again, I've got these uh, reference images. Uh, this is definitely the one I want to use for the logo and for this little display panel here. Uh, and it's, you know, I'm fortunate that I have a view of that vending machine that's basically face on. My idea is to just kind of copy directly from the animation and use what the animators created here as uh, my base image for the decals. So where these are face on, they're, they're practically perfect for that. Um, this one's more just for reference because it's at an oblique angle. There's not much here that I can use other than just for reference. Um, but this one here is a little more, again, kind of face on. It's much lower resolution. So, um, but I, it does give me this little control panel here. So I might be able to make use of that. And the, the low resolution might not actually be a problem because these decals are going to end up being tiny when they're printed. So uh, it might turn out okay. Th that's the idea. So I'm, I'm using GIMP, which is kind of like a an open source photo editor. Uh, it's pretty powerful. I've been able to do basically anything I needed to do for it. I'm, I'm not like a master photo editor by any means. Uh, very, very amateur, but it's helped me do the things that I've needed to do before. So um, I, I like this tool. So I've loaded in a couple of those reference images or at least pieces of them. So I've got this one. That's just the, the face on view of the logo and the little style display um, but it is kind of a little bit crooked it's a little kind of I don't know if you can see that there's a bit of a slant to it you know kind of in this direction and so I just kind of rotated that until it was more or less straight and then um, I've also got this one in case I want to end up using that I'm gonna try and use that we'll see so that's what I've got and then I also brought over uh, a reference image of from my 3D model. So I've got this as a scale reference, but also as a size reference. Because when I modeled this, um, it's this banner is quite a bit thinner in the vertical direction and wider in the horizontal direction than uh, what, I, what you can see in this image here. I'm not sure why I did that. Maybe going more off of that than, than this. I guess that might have been my reference for that. I think I might have been going for that. Anyway, so obviously this is a different aspect than this is. And so I'm going to have to do some stretching of the, the image, which I think will be okay. We'll see how it goes. Um, 
but this will this gives me an idea of what aspect, what size I need to, to make it. So that's why I've got this in here. Here's one that I've essentially cut from here, uh, copied and pasted over here. And let me take this and move it back. So I kind of put that in location there. So that is stretched a little bit um, compared to the original aspect ratio but I didn't want to stretch it completely all the way over. I made it about the right height, but if uh, if the decal goes, you know, just if the petite cola doesn't go all the way to the ends like this, I'm okay with that. If there's a little bit of extra yellow on the sides, I think that's going to be okay. I don't want to stretch it so far that it looks obviously wrong. So I think that's a good compromise right there. And so the, these are the same colors as that. They look a lot more vibrant up here compared to everything else around them. But when I bring them down here, they look quite a bit more muted. And again, I haven't adjusted the colors at all. All I did was just copy and paste over from the reference image over to here and then just adjusted the scale and the aspect. And it came in like this. So, so I wanted to adjust the coloration make the yellows brighter, make the, whiter, the whites whiter, and also to enhance the border. I think by the time we shrink this down to like actual size, something like that, I mean, it's really hard to tell that that's anything more than just a yellow smear. So I do want to trace around the edges with black just to really make that pop. So that's what I've done here is, and I find that easier to do in Microsoft Paint than to do inside of GIMP. Um, if you're just, if I'm just doing like pixel edits, I'll just copy and paste over in uh, Microsoft Paint. And then I went around and just manually hand traced around with black to highlight the, the edges. And then I also need to make this a little bit wider, not just for the front, but where it wraps around the sides a little ways. Uh, I need a little bit for that. I don't know exactly how far that is, so I'm just making it extra wide. So I think that's what I want my decal to look like right there. And, you know, from far away, it's still, I don't know. I don't know how this is going to turn out. <laughs> if you're going to be able to tell if the decal is right or not. So I'm going to do, definitely going to do a test print before I print anything on the actual uh, waterside decal paper. I'll just print on regular copy paper to see if this is even feasible. Um, so we'll see. So there's my Petite Cola logo decal. I did a similar process for this little uh, stylized display and, you know, brought that over, stretched it into about the right aspect that I wanted didn't, you know, but I wanted to boost the colors. So I brought that over into paint. I just, well, I just adjusted the colors using uh, the GIMP color adjustment tools first, and then brought it over, which is actually not bad, but I did want to thicken that blue border a little bit so you can see it better. So I brought that over into paint and thickened that up a little bit and just kind of cleaned up some of the, like the dark red frame around that. So you can see the difference there. So that looks good. And I don't really need to do anything else with that. So that's going to be my decal on that one. And then for the control panel, I brought over, that's the, the from the reference image here, just brought it over and then ended up, I think I had to end up scaling it up actually, because it's hard to, hard to tell here, but this is actually just a little bit smaller than this. And so when I scaled it up, it uh, kind of fuzzed fuzzed out the image quite a bit. So I didn't really care for that. So I just used that as a reference, um, brought it over into paint. And then since this is just kind of simple shapes like circles and rectangles, then I just kind of drew some circles and rectangles over in paint and then brought it back over and ended up with this. So, you know, up close, it's just, it's really, <laughs> really basic and simple looking, but, you know, again, it's going to be printing on this tiny scale. 
So might end up looking okay if it doesn't just end up looking like a blurry blob. So there it is. There's my three decals. I'm going to go ahead and uh, give it a test print on just regular paper first and see how it looks. This is what I came up with. And so scale wise, it looks about right. But what I'm most excited about is they didn't turn out as little blobs. You can actually see the detail on them. You can see the little control panel, a little uh, double arch style display, and then the logo. It's a little hard to read, but if you know it says Petite Cola, you can definitely see that it says that. So I'm really pleased with that. I wasn't sure the printer was actually going to be able to print detail that small. So I'm really glad about that. Just the last thing is to, let's, I'm going to cut this out and hold it up against the model, make sure it's actually the right size. Okay, height wise, that looks just right. It's obviously a little too wide, but I did that on purpose just because I, you know, it wraps around the sides. And so I didn't know exactly how long to make that. So I knew that was going to be oversized, but let's check the other ones. Okay, here's the control panel. That looks good. Height-wise, it looks bang on. And width, bang on. Cool. Perfect. And there's the little display. It looks just about right. All right. Success. On to the real deal. For the custom decals, I found this stuff. Water slide decal paper. It's supposed to work for inkjet and laser. I've got an inkjet. And it's not transparent. It's actually white. So this wouldn't work for every situation you'd want to use a decal on. Um, but it will work fine for the what I'm doing here. And I also... And it's also matte, which I'm not used to. So that'll be interesting. We'll see how that goes. Um, but the main reason I decided to get this is because it m most of the most of the decal custom waterside decal sheets that I've seen for sale, you have to put several coats of a clear spray on immediately after you print the decals onto the paper. You have to f fix the the image to the the water slide decal surface by spraying clear coats on and this purports to not need that and so I thought okay that'd be nice to not have to do that step I'll give this stuff a try see how it goes yeah anyway there's some instructions on how to do it basically most of these instructions are on how to apply a decal which you know I already know how to do that but for to actually print on this it tells you the printer settings and everything and then for me I t did a test print and figured out that load my paper in the tray, I have to put the printable side face down. So when it comes through, then it kind of flips it around like that. That may be different for uh, different printers, but that's the way it is for mine. So I've run the print and this is what I've got. I uh, did copy this over to multiple spots just so I'd have extras in case, in case I messed something up. But I mean, the print turned out great. The resolution is more than I could have asked for. It's really good. The color resolution is a little weird, like with, especially on the yellow. You can kind of see it's really pixelated. I don't know if that's the right word for the printing world, but anyway, that's. But from far away, it just you know looks normal. Looks like yellow, and the surface has got an interesting texture. It's really smooth. That has kind of like a grab to it when I slide my fingers over it. So, pretty interesting. The back just feels like normal paper. But, 
Yeah, I'm interested to give this a try and see how it goes. I'm curious how well this uh, ink sticks to the paper. Looks to be okay. Yeah, I don't see any smudging. There's nothing on my thumb, so... Yeah, that seems to hold pretty good. I printed this about, I don't know, eight minutes ago. So it's had that long to kind of sit and absorb, if, if that's even a factor. There it is. Let's uh, get it in some water and see what happens. Curls up a little bit, just like... Uh, any old decal paper will. Not how, sure how long this will take. I suspect it'll be very similar to the kind of decals I'm used to. So we'll give it 20, 30 seconds. Okay, yeah, that is sliding off there now. Okay. Yeah, so far so good. There it is. Definitely feels thicker than the kind of decal material I'm used to. Let's see if I can get that to wrap around the side. Try to do some of it on camera, but it's so small it's hard to hard to work with and film at the same time. Well, the stuff is, the paper is thick, plastic or whatever the substrate is in this decal material. So it doesn't really want to bend around that corner all that easily. And it doesn't really stick. I mean, not that the usual decals stick all that well until they're dried, but... I think I might have to let that dry in position there and then maybe come back and try some maybe decal setting solution. Don't know how that stuff works on this material. We'll see. Um, and see if I can get it to wrap around the side there. All right, it's the next day. This has been sitting for several hours. And as you can see, it's curled quite a bit. Let's see, I really don't think this is going to hold on there very well. We will, yeah, no, that just comes right off. Okay, well, so I'm going to put some decal solution, setting solution, Microsol, whatever, and see how it reacts. Okay, I'm going to try to carefully handle this so I don't pop that one off and just see if this helps with the adhesion. Okay, that seems to have uncurled it. It's gone flat again. We'll just have to see if it stays that way as it dries. Okay, I'm going to get the rest of these applied with more of this, more of this Microsol, and we'll see how it goes. We'll uh, come back after it's had time to dry and uh, see what difference it's made. Okay, I've done a little bit of weathering on the decals. See, I've just kind of gone through and chipped and scratched some of it away and put a little bit of paint over the top just to kind of you know blend in the weathering that was done on those didn't go too crazy on most of it just down here on the feet did more of the the chipping and scratching kind of stuff painted the weathering over the top of it and didn't really do too much of that up on the head. I've also sprayed on the matte coat, basically the final clear coat. And this 
the model itself is done. Also finished up the little vending machine and uh, putting a couple applications of the microsol on there definitely helped the decals to conform to kind of wrap around. Yeah, that really that did the trick. And then after that I put on a, uh, a matte clear coat just to tie it all together and to protect those decals. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it looks good. Huh? <laughs> I'm really satisfied with how this little, this silly little vending machine turned out. Okay, now that my vending machine is finished, my car is decently banged up and smashed, and the battle pod is finished, it's time to actually work on the base. So I have an idea in my head of kind of what I want to do with the base, and so I've just been testing a few things out to see what's going to work. I think what I want is to kind of have is to have the model positioned kind of like that and with kind of one leg, one foot up on a pile of debris and the debris is going to be from a smashed building so I want to maybe have some walls that kind of run through here and then a sidewalk running along the side of the building and then a street and I'll put the car somewhere here in the street and then the vending machine just on the sidewalk maybe just tipped over on the sidewalk or something but I think what I'll have is like there was a building here that maybe was constructed of concrete but it's mostly collapsed so there's just kind of the remains of the wall and I've sort of traced it out on the paper here to get us an idea of what the scale of things are, where the model is going to be in position relative to everything. The idea is to kind of have the wall, the corner of the building here, and then just run along off the edge of this, the base there. And the building is going to be just collapsed in and, and maybe some out as well. I might have some chunks of concrete wall out here on the, on the street and the battle pod will be just kind of standing on top of that rubble. And I also thought, just to, instead of having just, you know, one long kind of straight wall to break it up a little bit, make it a little more interesting is to have have a break in the wall here, like a gap for like a garage door, you know. Um, but, you know, it's going to be all collapsed, so you'll see like a piece of the garage door laying on the ground, covered in rubble, uh, maybe some like roof, rafter, steel beams and stuff kind of mixed in with the debris. And then on the street, just some general large chunks of concrete, small bits of rubble, and then the, the broken up car and the tipped over vending machine. And that's basically it. Um, paint some lines on the street probably. So I've cut off a slab of this foam here, and I just cut off a thin piece that seems a, that might be about the thickness of a concrete wall at this scale. And I started uh, chunking away bits of it to make it look broken. And then for the smaller, the smaller gouged out chunks, I've just been going in with, uh, with tweezers and just kind of picking, uh, picking pieces out. If I, I don't want to really push it in because then it leaves like, you know, like in, indentations, which doesn't really look right on concrete. So instead I, I just kind of like get a grip on it and then kind of pull chunks out if I pull it away, then it looks like it's more crumbly and broken out. Okay, so I've done a little bit more work on that. I got essentially two pieces of these kind of like thinner strips. One there and one there and glued them together. I tried to work a little bit to hide that seam, but you can, you can see it there. Just uh, using some PVA glue put those together. I tried using all sorts of, basically every type of glue that I have to try and stick these, this foam together. Almost every type of glue I have 
actually melts the foam. So I put a little bit of glue on there and the foam just melts like that. And it ends up like the, the, the surface you put the glue on just like retreats away. So you basically end up with nothing actually holding on because the surfaces that you want to bond together just melt and retreat. Um, and that happened with uh, CA glue, both the, the thick and the thin stuff. It happened with uh, plastic cement, which is not really surprising because the whole idea with that is this stuff is to uh, melt the plastic to have it fused together. The one that did surprise me was the E6000. I didn't expect this to do that, but it did. It uh, it wasn't as bad. I think that was this one right here. This is the the E6000 kind of melted it in like that? So definitely not as like not as drastic as some of these. Like it didn't melt as deep into there. So this is what I end up using: just PVA glue, white glue. I was didn't know if it would be very strong, but it seems to be strong enough. I mean, obviously I want to crank on that too hard or it will break, but I mean, the foam's fragile on its own. So, but, you know, I'm able to put a bit of flex on that and not have it just come apart. So I think it's, the bond is going to be just fine. Basically that's going to be one corner of the building there. And then the garage door opening there. And then this will be this end of the building here. All of the pieces that I've cut away, I've just capped because that'll that's perfect for rubble. Even the smaller little chunks that I broke away, I'm hanging on to all that stuff. Just I can use it. I need all the rubble I can get around here. So that's the idea. And then I've done a little bit of work just to kind of distress this concrete. Again, just by picking at it with the tweezers, you can take chunks out and with the knife, I just can kind of run along and make what look like cracks in the concrete. Let's see if I can get a good shot of that. There you go. You can kind of see cracks there, here. So I laid all of this out on a piece of paper first, just to kind of brainstorm what I wanted the layout to look like and about how big I'm going to need to cut the base. I think I'm going to use wood. I could use foam for the base, but I'm worried that might actually be a little bit too lightweight and where this is so tall that um, it might not be enough to keep it from tipping over. So I think I want to do something a little bit heavier than just the foam for the base. So I'm going to just cut it out of a piece of wood. And it's not going to be very big, as you can see. Um, this is the size that I decided on. Gives me enough room to get the model on there, show a little bit of the street with some rubble and the, the car and the vending machine without being a gigantic diorama. So I cut this piece of, what they call it masonite or something, just kind of like fiber, fiber board, about an eighth of an inch thick, three, three-ish millimeters thick. So I started cutting some styrene for those pieces. I've got this, which is for that lower portion there. And then I've got for the sidewalk, this is the 0.06 styrene, pretty, pretty thick stuff. And then the building, We'll go on there. I've also got a little bit of sidewalk that's going to go around the side of the building there. I've got that cut out of the same 0.06 inch thick. I guess I uh, kind of got most of this figured out. All I have really left to do is just kind of work on what the rubble is going to be like. Because like I said, I think I want to have the pod standing on well, this, it's like a whole building has collapsed here, right? There's not much of this building left, so that rubble had to go somewhere. And I didn't, I don't really want to make it look like it just exploded. It's not like a bomb site or anything. It's just, you know, kind of collapsed from battle damage. And so I'll have some of the rubble laying out on the street. I'll have most of it on the inside. So I'm going to have to cut some bigger pieces. I do have some other kind of foam here. 
which which is from got like a big sheet of I don't know what you call this like poster board or something where it's got it's got paper kind of thick card on both sides of the layer of foam in between so you can see that I cut a little section out that's this little piece here and on this one I did actually just pull the paper away just to see what kind of a surface it would leave and it actually came off pretty good for some additional just accents and details I've got I'm thinking for maybe the the garage door most of it's going to be buried under rubble but I think I might have some of it be visible as debris I've got this little piece that I can use at least a portion of it obviously this is way wider than I need but I can use a portion of that to kind of represent a, a piece of the garage door and uh, this came from just a little kit that I bought from again from the model railroading shop so I might have pieces of I will have pieces of that in there and this was a part of that kit as well as part of the signal bridge kit and that's the deck of the bridge but it kind of has a garage door sort of look to it so I'll just have some pieces of that I also have some styrene little L angle shapes to just again kind of add some steel structural elements to the debris okay this is progress so far as you can see I've I've glued the windows or the the walls down I've added a few other little details in addition to the painting as you can see I've added just a few little bits of rebar sticking through in a few places and then in a couple places you can see where there's like still like a chunk of concrete that's held on with the rebar there's one there and then there's one over here just thought that looked kind of cool so I went with that and then here for where the garage door is going to be I added in some of that uh, L-shaped styrene strips like this here L L shaped stuff. It looks like uh, angle steel. So I put those there and kind of made like a track that the garage door would ride up and down in and then just look like it was broken off at random parts. And then one part that's still attached but kind of has been twisted off to the side there. And I like the look. I like the way it's turning out. Also, as you can see, I've, I've mounted the model. I had to put some thought into how I was actually going to attach the model to the base. Initially, I was thinking I would just glue the feet, the pads of the feet, onto, you know, the built-up rubble of the display stand. But the only glue that I have that isn't reacting negatively to the styrofoam, that's not just melting it, is the, is the white craft glue. And... It's strong enough to hold these little pieces of styrofoam in place just fine, but I wasn't confident that it was going to be able to really securely fasten the model. And so, especially where, you know, as tall as this model is, and its center of gravity is up pretty high, that it wouldn't take much, you know, leverage to really kind of put a lot of stress on these joints down here and break them free. So I just, I didn't think that the, the craft glue was really going to do what I needed it to do there. So I just had to come up with something different. And eventually I settled on just running some screws through the base and drilling directly into the model. And so I'll turn this over so you can see there's a couple screws gone through there and I had to countersink those just so that the screw heads uh, weren't going to be you know sticking out too much below the flat surface of the base and then you can see the screws going through and into just that flat portion of in between the, the foot pads just kind of went through and 
I pre-drilled the hole just because I didn't want the screw to do all the work. That would probably just tend to split or crack the plastic. And I made sure I didn't do it right on the seam. There's actually a seam that runs down the middle between those two pieces. And I didn't want the screw to go through there because that would just tend to split those two pieces apart. So that's why it's offset to one side. So it's just uh, drilling through solid plastic there. The only thing I didn't really think about when I started, before I started drilling was that there's a little mechanism that holds these foot pads on and that, you know, allows them to, to kind of move and flex around. And where I was essentially drilling through right there, I was hitting right into that mechanism. So I ended up drilling into that. So I guess there's a risk of that, that foot pad breaking off at that mechanism separating, but I, I think it'll be okay. Once I get the model in place and the display stand kind of built up with the rebel and everything, it's not really going anywhere. So it should be fine. And it, uh, it seems pretty sturdy. Sturdy enough anyway. It, uh, and the model isn't, you know, it's not really wobbling around on there. So I think that's going to be just fine. So I've kind of worked on building up what the rubble is going to look like under this foot, and I've already got all that in place. That's actually already all glued down. I've also scribed in the seams on the, the sidewalk. As you can see there. I've also sanded down this portion here where a vehicle would drive up over the curb. And yeah, I think that it's going to look good once I get the sidewalk painted, get the road painted. For painting the concrete, uh, I decided to go with, just for kind of the base color, um, with this Folk Art Steel Gray. And I like the look of that. I think I'll probably change that up for the sidewalk. I want that to look like it's made of a little bit different concrete. And so I'll maybe pick a lighter color for that maybe a more bluish color we'll see but that's uh i like that for the building and then for the highlights on the concrete as you can see there's there's several colors going on there in the concrete so the, the steel gray was the base color and for the highlight highlights i did this uh, ceram coat drizzle gray and then for the darker patches. I'm doing this ceram coat deep taupe. Which looks like that. So I just do the base coat, just glop it on. I don't worry about overdoing it on that. Um, I just get, you know, just be sloppy, glop it on there. Because being a little excessive with the paint is actually good for this styrofoam. It tends to fill in some of the little circular cavities that are on the surface. If I put just a light coat on it, then uh, you can tell that that's that it's styrofoam. But if I get a little heavy-handed with the paint, it kind of fills those in and just gives more of a mottled, rough surface for the concrete. And I think it ends up looking better. So yeah, the base coat just goes on heavy. And then for the, the, the highlights, I just dry brush on just kind of randomly, just whatever looks good. And then for the dark color, I do, I use that a little much more sparingly and just kind of do in some of the deeper spots where it looks like there's been chunks of concrete that have broken out. I'll kind of just, again, just dry brush it down in there just to make those sections stand out a little bit more. And then just do a few little mottled spots here and there. But it does help give a, an extra dimension of color, you know, because concrete, especially with like a, a larger aggregate, it's going to have multiple colored stones inside of it. Some of them light, some of them dark. So a lot of that effect is achieved just with the texture, the surface texture of the, the styrofoam. Just the, the way the light hits it with shading and stuff, it makes it look mottled. But having a little bit extra of this in there just adds more dimensionality to it, I think. I like the effect. I think it looks, I think it looks good. I've got a few pieces left to do. I don't know that I'll use all these. Uh, again, I'm just kind of building it up as I go. I've got an idea of how I want this pile to look so that it looks like it's standing on it and kind of crushed some of it as it st stood on it. Kind of like what I did here. That was my idea with with this other foot is I've got 
like it was like one continuous slab, but there was other debris underneath it. And when it stepped on it, it just cracked it and broke it into multiple pieces. And so that's what I was going with there. Cause obviously this thing is, is big and it's going to be heavy and it's definitely going to crush things that it stands on. Uh, for the rebar, I just used some actual wire. I just had some of this, uh, well, this, it's just really thin wire, 26 gauge, that I guess is used for maybe like floral arrangements or something where it's kind of got that, that green color to it. It makes me think that's what it's for. I don't know where this came from. We just had it sitting around. I think it's something my wife picked up years and years ago and, uh, just, yeah, comes in handy for just such things as this. Um, but I didn't really want the green color, so I just painted that over with some of the char charcoal color that I've been using for the dark parts of the model. Okay, here it is. Uh, I think the base is done. I got it to the point where I think it's good. I'm going to leave it alone. Um, there's always a danger of overdoing this kind of stuff, so... I think it's to a point where I'm, I'm good with it, so I'm going to leave it. Um, obviously, quite a bit more done than the last time you saw it. I just got on a roll trying to put all the rubble and debris and broken things into the base and just kept going. Then I realized I was done, so... So here it is. Got the lines in the sidewalk scored, sidewalk painted, lines in the road painted. Got you know some cracks and and dings on the on the curb, the road surface. Um, I just painted the road the charcoal gray and then kind of dusted over with some just various shades of gray to kind of give it some variation. And then yeah, um. Let's see, I also put in the pieces of kind of broken building stuff from that uh, little railroad kit that I had that had these kind of structural truss parts that I could make look like rafter trusses or something. And then it also had this... Oh, and I have done that so many times. I just broke off that little piece of angle I wanted to glue it back on. I've done that so many times. It just sticks up and I'm always running into it. <sighs> okay. Anyway, so this uh, kind of, it was the deck of that whole little signal bridge thing, the railroad thing. And I uh, just made it kind of look like a crumpled and broken roll-up door, like a garage door. And I, I like the way that turned out. I think that looks... Looks pretty good. And yeah, lots of lots of pieces of foam for all the destroyed concrete. And then also there's some tiny little pieces of rubble. And for that I used uh, some model railroading ballast, this stuff here. Just a coarse gray, coarse gray ballast, which looks like crushed rock, and yeah, that turned out pretty good. I didn't, I did overdo that. I put a bunch on and kind of had just like little piles of it scattered here and there, and it just didn't look realistic. It just looked like someone had gone through and just put little piles everywhere. So I, I did end up going back and taking most of that out, but there's still a few here and there, and then obviously just down on on the street where there would be more. So, and then I put my car down and my little vending machine and just a few pieces of that angle steel sticking out in random places. And yeah, I mean, I think it, <laughs> it turned out really cool. I like the result. I have to glue that one piece back on for the, what, the fifth time now? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the uh, screws through the legs, that's holding the, that's holding the model on really nicely. And it just looks like it's standing there. But it's just got, uh, 
there's the there's the piece that I just broke off. It's just got the couple screws that go through there. And if you look, if you look through, you can you can see the screws. But I did end up painting them black just so they wouldn't stand out as much. And from the front, you don't really you don't really see them unless you're looking for them. So I think that's good enough. Anyway, uh, yeah, I think that's it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get some glamour shots of this thing. The, the full thing on the stand. As these photos of the finished model play through, I'll give a few final thoughts on this kit and this build. The kit itself is, I think, overall pretty good. The subject is just an iconic vehicle design and I think the, the kit faithfully reproduces uh, the design itself. It's fairly simple, at least as far as part count goes. The assembly was a little bit complicated, mostly owing to the articulation that's built into this model. The articulation is nice in that I get to I was able to choose the final pose that I wanted to display the model in. But the other side of that coin was that the articulation made it a little more difficult to work with while I was putting the model together. The only other thought I really have on the kit itself is just another comment on those weird little internal pieces that I could never really figure out what they were for or why they were included. It's still, still baffling to me. It's an odd little mystery, anyway. Now, the build for me was really enjoyable. Um, I got to try some new things with that blue interference paint on the legs. That was fun to experiment with, to try and find a good solution. And I liked the result um, that I was able to get. It ended up being a little bit more subtle than I wanted. Um, I thought I had it dialed in, but I think when, when I put the gloss coat on prior to doing all the decal work, it that gloss coat tended to accentuate the the interference blue coating. Um, and so I thought I thought I might have had a problem of it going the other way of being being too pronounced. But then once I was finished with the decals and put the final matte coat on, it canceled out that enhancement from the gloss coat, but it also dulled it down even more than it was before I had put any clear coats on. And so it ended up being a little bit more subtle than I wanted, but you can still see it, and I'm, I'm glad it's there, and I'm glad I did it. Um, but it's challenging to get that dialed in just right and trying to anticipate and plan ahead for how much uh, that effect is going to be attenuated by any clear coats that I add later on. I just, I didn't get that. I didn't get the bullseye on that one, but I got close. I still am pleased with the result. I like the uh, extra little enhancements I made on the, the sensors, little eyes on the, the pod itself. I'm glad I enhanced the model with that little feature. I think it just adds a little bit of extra life to it that it, was, it wasn't there before. And then I wouldn't have had the same effect if I had just used the, the decals that were part of the original design. I had a lot of uh, fun experimenting and trying out different methods of weathering. I think I mentioned that before, that I'm not really comfortable doing that. Like, I haven't had a lot of experience doing that. And so um, I, one of the things I learned is that I just kind of need to go for it, you know? Just uh, try stuff out and see what works and what doesn't, and just, just go for it. The results turned out great. I am really happy with how it looks. Got some new skills in my toolbox that I can use for future models. And the display base was just, just for a bit of fun, you know, just something to do. I've never really done anything like that before. Kind of like that scale cityscape kind of stuff, like, you know, model railroaders are, are very familiar with that kind of thing. And I've always been fascinated with just miniature versions of recognizable everyday things and being able to construct something like that was fun but without the pressure of having to make it look like a little city because in this case for this model it's a, a destroyed city so I got to have a bit of fun with that definitely much more forgiving of my uh, my amateur skill level on that sort of thing I think 
Anyway, this was a really fun build, and I'm really pleased with the result, and I'm happy that I got to get it on video and uh, share it with y'all. I appreciate you coming along on the journey with me. I've got more models, kits in my stash. Don't know what I'm going to do next, but uh, it'll be fun, that's for sure. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.